Hello and welcome back to our YouTube channel. My name is Herman and in this episode, which is part one of a series of two, we will be uh, digging into the security dungeons with EPEEP MS Chap V2 and we will be answering the question why you should or better should not use MS Chap V2. I presented this content earlier on the WLAN Pro conference in uh, Budapest uh, earlier this month, October 2016, and I decided to record it in two parts uh, and put it on YouTube on our channel to uh, make sure you can uh, read it again. So, what is EPEEP MS Chap V2? It's a combination of a few protocols. So, uh, first of all, we have the EEP protocol and the E protocol is uh, used to do uh, something called 8021X and 8021X is widely used in uh, both wireless and in uh, wired so when we use it in uh, wireless we use it in combination with WPA2 enterprise and uh, the EEP is uh, the extensible authentication protocol uh, which defines how a client can securely authenticate to uh, the network. And that's mostly done with an, a radio server to do the authentication. So with that EEP, we have a, called, uh, a method called EEP PEEP. Um, and EEP PEEP stands for uh, a protected EEP. And uh, it is defined in a draft RFC, but um, everyone implemented it. So it's very widely spread. And there was a lot of client support that makes this happen. And basically, it set up an TLS tunnel uh, just like we do with uh, connecting to a secure web server so the client will get a uh, certificate presented and that certificate uh, basically mo mostly comes from the radius server and only if that certificate is trusted then the client will continue. And what it will continue then is with the uh, inner authentication um, and then we can build EPEEP MSCHAP V2 where the inner authentication is uh, made of MSCHAP V2. So all the references are here if you want to uh, look them up. But I will summarize them. So what is MSCHAP V2? MSCHAP is the Microsoft version of a challenge response authentication protocol. And what challenge response authentication protocols do is, is they work with uh, passwords, credentials, and what they can do is if a client knows a credential and the server knows the credential, they can, uh, without sending the credential itself over the line for validation, uh, they can uh, send questions and answer and they play the game, um, which is called handshakes. And that's uh, at the end of the game, they know for sure that both authentication uh, partners, so the client and the radio server, have the knowledge about the actual password without uh, sending that password. And in EPIP MS Chap V2, um, we have that outer tunnel, um, which is called PEEP again for uh, the protection of the MS Chap V2 handshakes. So what is the issue uh, for MS Chap V2? So MS Chap V2 has been ba basically broken uh, already back in 1999, so 17 years ago. A cryptographer uh, called Bruce Steyer, he made a crypt analysis uh, with a few other guys on the MS Chap V2 or on the PPTP authentication extensions and found some weaknesses. And um, those weaknesses resulted into uh, some follow-up work. And um, one of the tools is, uh, is ASLeap, which will, um, uh, will extract passwords or from the challenge responses. So we have the challenge responses for the password. If we can capture that challenge response with ASLeap, we can do a brute force password attack. So we can try any password that we know um, until we have a match. Um, if we have collected that uh, challenge response uh, for a specific client. So the big issue is that uh, still in these days, many people are using MS Chap V2. And the problem is that it is widely supported. It's very convenient. It very nicely ties into Active Directory, uh, which still uh, many people use. 
And uh, that will get us in an uh, infinite circle uh, where it's widely supported. People use it. It will be uh, more supported. And that will be what people use. So uh, it's very difficult to get out of this uh, infinite circle. And um, for that reason, so there's nothing new in this presentation. Um, but for that reason, I decided to record it and put it on uh, YouTube. So I decided to uh, give it a try. So how difficult is it to get those challenge responses and how difficult is it to get passwords or access uh, from those challenge responses? I think a warning is um, on the play. So uh, only try this at home. So uh, don't do this in uh, open uh, organizations. Don't do this in open places. Uh, don't attack other one uh, systems. So at least in my country, uh, you can do this for uh, for research on your own clients, but uh, not on other uh, clients, and you might get in trouble with the uh, local authorities. So this is the set test setup that I created. I have an um, access point um, with a corporate SSID called a corporate WPA2, and that's configured for uh, WPA2 a PEEP MSJAP V2. And uh, what you can see is that I have seven clients here on my client. So I decided to take uh, the clients that I had. So I had a Windows 8 phone. Uh, I have an, a MacBook here, a Kindle, a Chromebook, uh, an Ubuntu client. So I all uh, configure them to connect to the network, um, basically with the basic, uh, the basic configuration. So let's call these the clients under attack. And for the test, what I did is I created a uh, so-called evil twin access point with the same SSID. Um, and you can uh, run that uh, yourself if you have uh, basic uh, free available tools like uh, Kali Linux. Uh, it's in there. And uh, the tool is called host APD minus WPE, which is a special uh, addition to do these kinds of attacks and to collect uh, MS Chap V2 challenges. So to uh, speed it a bit up, um, I decided um, then to uh, to turn off uh, this access point. So this access point you can see here, um, it's a dual band uh, access point and um, quite strong. Uh, but we also see here uh, already the SSID um, that's for the uh, evil twin access point. So this one, the second one is the evil twin on channel one and the others um, are the genuine access points. So for the test, I decided to turn off this access point and see what's happening. So this is a lock on the radius server. So on the radius server, we can see that clients are trying to connect. We see the Ubuntu trying to connect. We see the uh, Kindle trying to connect. We see the Windows 10 trying to connect and we see them all uh, getting in. And if we leave this running, so this uh, whole process took about a minute. Uh, I think I speeded it a bit up for um, for the presentation. So uh, what you can see here is the Windows Phone. We see here the uh, the Windows 10 system uh, trying to connect. Uh, this is the MacBook trying to connect. And here we can see, uh, for example, the Chromebook to connect. We also can clearly see two authentication. So we see two times the uh, the, the, the client connecting. The first one is the outer authentication, uh, the ePeep, and this one is the inner authentication, the MS Chap V2. And in this case, what we can see is that we have um, this nice challenge response uh, found out. This, we have this uh, handshake, and uh, these handshakes will help us to um, yeah to crack the passwords. And um, I will show you how you can do that in uh, the second video of this uh, of this series. So if we check on the client, so the client should be detecting that the radius certificate is not valid. Um, so this is what you will see on a Windows 10 client. So on the Windows 10 client, um, we suddenly see, uh, do you want to continue connect? Um, so he found that there's something wrong or different with the certificate and uh, it prevented from automatically connecting. So that's good. Uh, we also can click here on the show certificate details and we can see the server thumbprint. 
Um, big question to me is how users will respond to this. I think most users will uh, blindly press the connect button and then we will get the uh, challenge response for this system uh, as well. So second example, this is the uh, Windows Phone and on the Windows Phone you will see uh, more information. So I didn't try to uh, obfuscate, obfuscate anything. So I have some bogus information in here, which is in fact the default for uh, OpenSSL or Free Radius. And uh, this one yeah, clearly says, uh, do you want to connect to uh, this uh, server? And probably if we leave this information in, uh, People uh, might press cancel here and not connect, but if you put in the name of the company here, uh, so it looks very uh, genuine, um, I think many people will still connect to uh, this uh, to this client. And this is how it will look on uh, the MacBook. Um, so on the MacBook, uh, we also have the show certificate. So by default, it will um, pre-select on continue. Uh, but let's see what happens if we click on the show uh, certificate. Here we can see um, yeah, the same uh, kind of information. So um, yeah, a bit the same as here. Um, do you trust your users to uh, not press continue here and expose their um, AD credentials uh, to the public? What worried me most is that on the, all the other devices, um, so I had a Kindle, I had an Android phone, and I had a Chromebook, um, they just happily connected to the Rogue access point. You saw that in the collected, uh, collected uh, challenge responses. It just happily connected, and we can easily uh, grab that challenge response uh, authentication um, to crack it later on or to get access to the network for the uh, for the uh, for the Ubuntu system uh, I need to say that uh, when I in, uh, initially configured it it uh, asked me to uh, to select the certificate to validate and I disabled that because I didn't have a uh, certificate uh, but um, yeah still uh, these uh, Android devices and uh, derivatives, um, it looks like they will happily connect to the network if you um, put on a rogue radio server. So after this process, we have collected from uh, most of the systems. So I um, did select the uh, continue on those other systems as well. So uh, we'll, ha we'll have here the uh, challenge responses collected for these clients. So what if I bring up a, uh, a corporate network SSID in front of uh, a nice uh, corporation or if I put on the other room SSID in, uh, in, in the garden of a university or um, in the uh, if I put those networks uh, on the air on an airport or in a busy conference um, or even use uh, a system called Karma, which will automatically change the SID of the access point, the rogue access point to uh, networks that people are probing. So I didn't check, but you will get a lot of challenge responses if you uh, do this attack properly. So it's very worrisome um, to uh, use MSTAP v2 on your network um, unless you completely um, completely uh, control the clients. That will be the conclusion, uh, which I will keep uh, for the end of the second video. So please go to the next video. There will be a link here. And uh, in the next video, we will show you how to get from this collected hash to network access. I hope you like this video. Thank you again for watching and please uh, like our channel and subscribe to the channel and if you have any comments put them below this video and uh, yeah we will be happy to answer it if you want to have new videos on specific topics please also let it know and we will do that so again thank you very much for now